It's going to be our new home. It's a 1999 Bigfoot motorhome. Sits on top of a Ford cutaway chassis, uh, E450 Super Duty, 6.8 liter, 415 cubic inch engine, uh, automatic of course. Diesel would have been nice, but uh, they're expensive and hard to come by. Uh, we're not the first owners. Uh, we bought it from a private seller recently in the area, March of 2014. Uh, the coach has been well cared for. Uh, recessed awning, uh, propane refrigerator. Below that is the uh, gas heater and uh, the batteries, electric step, a lot of standard features in an RV. Uh, some storage here on the side. Uh, it's got a fiberglass exterior and a, uh, I think it's an EPDM roof membrane. I can see up there in the center is a rear view camera, which is real handy until it leaks, which we discovered. Uh, set up for trailer lights. Uh, the wiring, I believe, is there for uh, trailer brakes as well, but I don't have the gain controller. Uh, we have a lot of storage here in the rear. Propane here, uh, electrical hookup. 16 inch rims, <clears throat> um, some water inlets, outlets, uh, here is the, uh, wa uh, excuse me, the water heater, gas water heater, uh, only gas, uh, some, uh, the generator down here, the Onan, standard generator for an RV, uh, sewage discharge, the uh, sewer hose is stored in a little box towards the back there, um, a lot more storage here. Uh, I don't think I have any window leaks that I know of as of yet, but uh, I'm going to be popping out a lot of these windows and resealing them just so I know. Uh, let's see, the body has, the chassis has about 45,000 miles on it. I think they did some towing. <clears throat> Go on inside the coach. Um, originally, this model came with. Uh, Two bucket chairs right here as you walk in to the right. Uh, the previous owners removed those and uh, put in this little couch that folds down into a bed. It's um, relatively new. It's it's uh, it's not my favorite, but um, it's it's pretty comfortable. So we'll be keeping that for a while. Uh, originally, this had uh, uh, two of these bench seats sitting opposite of each other, and uh, a fold down table that lays down here. Pretty common in RVs to make it into a bed. Uh, we removed one of them because, as you can see up here, this is not original. I installed this. Um, this bed, uh, set up for a queen-size bed, comes out quite a bit from the wall here. Uh, the original hole, you see the wood that I installed, all this blue trim here. It's what the original hole looked like. And uh, at one point there was a... Uh, um, an entertainment center here, full of cabinets, TV in the center. Um, it was rather nice storage, had a fold-out um, trundle bed, I suppose you call it. Big enough for about a 10-year-old kid. And uh, But we decided that uh, for just the two of us, my wife and I and two cats, we can uh, prefer to sleep up there and use the back room, which was originally the main bedroom for other purposes. So uh, about 50 bucks in wooden screws. And uh, it's pretty sturdy. Pretty sturdy. This is the original mattress that came out of the back room. This is just temporary. We'll put a good mattress up here at some point. Uh, headroom is obviously an issue, and uh, currently I don't have any kind of ladder to get up there. I, I don't have much trouble, but my wife is a bit shorter. And she has a little bit of uh, difficulty, I'm sure, getting up and down. And even myself, it would get old after a while, so we'll come up with a solution for that. In this hole here where we re removed the, uh, the other bench seat, uh, it was bolted down four places through the floor with steel plates underneath inside one of the uh, basement storage compartments. Uh, I believe that we're going to try to look for a cabinet of some sort and a countertop and uh, that will give us a little more space with the kitchen and a little bit of storage. Uh, we're going to retain that bench seat for now uh, mostly because it has the water heater in behind it <clears throat> and uh, this thing has a pretty heavy steel frame and I would have to remove a lot of the plumbing because it's all looped through the steel frame and uh, in order to get the steel frame out pretty much completely unplumb, deplumb the water heater 
So at this point, I have other things to be concerned about. It's a little bit of seating. If you sit kind of long ways, it's, it's pretty, pretty comfortable. It works for now. But I'm sure in the future, we'll have different ideas. I'm not crazy about the interior colors. This blue and gold and whatever. RVs never seem to be styled very well, but uh, we'll deal with it. Um, I love the blinds. I mean, they're not the most aesthetically pleasing thing, but uh, they work exceedingly well. And you have that cover that comes down. You want a little privacy. Uh, tons and tons of lights. Let me turn on the lights here. The disconnect. The batteries are just underneath in that lower compartment. Not very well accessible. Uh, I'd like to replace a lot of these. They're just like a 12-volt automotive bulb uh, with LEDs eventually. I don't know what the current draw is on them, but you get them all on. There's really no need with current technology to retain incandescent bulbs. The uh, kitchen is rather nice. Um, obviously, you don't have a lot of countertop space. The oven is exceedingly small. We do have a hood vent, which I've never had a hood vent. 110 microwave. Uh, sink's not my favorite. This doesn't even move. So we'll find a replacement for that at some point. Uh, propane fridge. I don't remember what the BT rating is per hour on this, but um, I did freeze some stuff in it, chilled some beer. Works rather well. Uh, on back, a nice little spice cupboard here. This slides out. I rather like that. Uh, some storage here in the hallway. This will uh, actually probably be some clothes. Maybe we'll put shelves in there, kitchen supplies, whatnot. Um, bathroom's not too shabby. It actually has a uh, decent shower slash bathtub. Can't exactly lay down in it, but it's better than many RVs that I've seen. Uh, this rig has two nice vinyl window skylights. Um, this unit is um, was manufactured in British Columbia, and uh, I think it was made for some colder weather. Uh, it has dual pane windows all around. Um, they all open. Yeah, they all open. Um, the vinyl windows do not, or uh, skylights do not. Um, but of course, we have a hood vent here and a fan in and out. Three speed. Uh, again, the sink's not my favorite. We'll change that at some point. But uh, we do have some nice little, uh, nice little storage there. Uh, RV toilet. Have never used one before. Uh, eventually, we will be replacing that with a composting toilet system. Uh, I'll talk about that in a later video. But um, I would like to get rid of that black water tank and not have to use the water and putrefy a bunch of water and find places to dump the nasty stuff. Uh, not really any storage above here. I think this isn't, isn't very well used space. It could use some shallow cupboards of some sort. Uh, the rear bedroom. Um, we have, you see obviously there used to be a bed that was right there against the wall. Here's the outline of the frame. We tore all that out the day that we bought it and uh, discovered behind a headboard that was mounted to the wall there. Once we pulled that off, we discovered uh, some water damage to the wall. And uh, this this paneling structure, this is not wallpaper, this is a, it's a vinyl faced paneling, you know, about an eighth inch thick, and it, it doesn't seem to, to show damage until the paneling really starts to warp, um, which is good and bad. I mean, it's tough. I'm sure it's easy to clean, but, um, you know, in this case here, it would have been nice to know that about that damage before we bought it, not that it necessarily would have changed our, our um, intentions to get it. But, uh, so we started ripping and tearing, pulling away the material. It's not very pretty. But um, this rig has an aluminum frame, um, one and a half inch insulated uh, walls. The uh, aluminum tubular frame actually has uh, square tubes, box frame, actually has um, insulation inside the tubes. How well that really works with the metal transferring the heat, I don't really know. But nonetheless, somebody was thinking a little bit. It's good for advertising. Here's where the rear view camera is. And that is probably what caused all the problems. It leaked down here and saturated all the wood, kind of more or less in a bell shape is where it was the worst. So we removed as much of that wood as we could. Uh, retained these cabinets, even though the paneling behind them probably should have been removed. 
Uh, at this point, though, I feel that there's no structural issues since the um, coach doesn't have a wooden frame, it has an aluminum frame. So um, really the issue is wet, soggy wood and possibility of mold. Um, a couple of days with the dehumidifier, fans, and heat gun, and uh, it's pretty well bone dry uh, from what I can find, but um, we will be vigilant about um, uh, keeping after it. The cabinets we kept because they're pretty useful right now, and uh, the way these coaches are built, everything is screwed, glued, and stapled together, and uh, uh, there's really no back to the cabinet. It's not like a kitchen cabinet you would have that you would, it would be freestanding. Uh, once you take this thing apart, it's, it's in little pieces and it doesn't really go back well, get it back together well. So, uh, hood vent fan, I said lights all around. There's at least a dozen, 15, maybe 18 lights. There was a corner cabinet down here. Uh, removed that, it wasn't very useful. Place for like a tiny little TV. We're not big TV people. Um, there was a um, sliding door here that slid out and covered the doorway, but again, useless space. It took up a whole wall. We're going to put some cabinets in, tall cabinets that will stand up and down here, come to about right above that heater vent. There'll be a space underneath. I didn't want to have to move the heater vent yet, and uh, these cabinets worked out that I can get them, make them high, and then there's a place to kick off shoes underneath. Uh, this cabinet isn't really that useful. That panel actually goes parallel back here. I have it pulled out because I wanted to see what was behind it and this is actually an exterior light. Um, a big globe light, outside light, um, which is, well, if I remove that cabinet I'm going to have this kind of eyesore that I'd have to cover up somehow. So for now we'll we'll keep that. Uh, carpeted back here. Um, it's not the worst carpet. It can be cleaned. Uh, vinyl flooring out in the kitchen. Again, it's, it's, uh, it's good for now. It can be cleaned, but perhaps in the future there'll be a wooden flooring of some sort, um, you know, click together, floating floor. <clears throat> uh, all together, it's, uh, it's a nice coach. It's one of the better ones that we've seen, especially for the price. Plenty of storage all around. There will be additional storage. Nice skylight in the middle. You can see the stars at night. It's not foggy or faded, translucent. It's nice and clear. As I said, all the windows open. The front here, there's some 12 volt power, 110, uh, some coax cable. Um, haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, 12 volt, I would like a power source of some sort for USB charging. Um, the 110, I'm sure I'll put an outlet in. The coax will probably get tucked away somewhere. Um, and this dead space here on the end, uh, eventually there'll probably be some light cubby holes of some sort. Oh, and then we have two cats, so there will be cat trees and perches and all manner of uh, 